any memories of your WWF Germany Austria tour? And I believe I've heard a story similar to that where the boys were trying to press you to work even though you were injured there as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, well I uh I think I did work there but I was being uh I can't remember now what the injury was but uh yeah, I was working uh, cuz I I remember the the night in Vienna, Austria. I remember the dean is supposed to be the world's smartest man at that time, seven PhDs. I've since earned three more, so now it's 10 <laughs> PhDs. Uh, I just need to hear it there. Not that I'm smarter than anybody or anything. Uh, so I, I figured, well, this I mean, we're in a hot bit of history here in Vienna, Austria, right? So Tony Greer, again, up, up to, to the, prior to this and after this, but when I was there, uh, it was always Tony Greer was on the heel bus. Rene Goulet was on the babyface bus. And the reason was Tony's a prick. Sarge is a sweetheart. Everybody loves Sarge. Mm. So uh, I'd already had some run-ins with him earlier in that tour. And, excuse me, my coffee is giving me the belches. But uh, he uh, he had said, kept pressuring me in Vienna, Austria. What are you going to say in your promo? What are you going to say in your promo? And I really couldn't think of anything. And I'm, you know, Vienna, Austria, I'm like, hey, something in my head. And I thought, Hitler is where Hitler came from, right? So... So I go to the ring and I say, I'll, I'll think of it on the way. I know I wasn't going to say that to him. I knew he'd shoot it down. But I mean, it's it's patently absurd for the world's smartest man, seven PhDs, one in history, by the way, that I wouldn't say something about this, right? And uh, so I would start off every night in some German. I said, Ich spreche English, das ist besser. I'll speak English, this is better, which obviously is going to piss people off, right? And uh, I said, the dean has come to Vine. For a reason. I'm looking at the place. <laughs> I said, I wanted to look in the eyes of the people that spawned Adolf Hitler. <laughs> and I mean, it's like, yeah. you could have heard a, 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 a fart in church there. It was <laughs> and, and I come back and he's like, don't ever say that again. But that <laughs> night in that building, as I, I was last coming out, the dressing room was upstairs. And I'm coming down the stairs and he's on the payphone to Vince. I had watched all the matches that night, and you could see who was working hard and who wasn't working hard. And uh, he buried everybody on the card except for the click. It went out of his way. They all oh, they were great. They were the only ones that worked hard and that kind of stuff. And it, when I came down the stairs, I glared at him like, "Boy, you got some fucking balls, right?" And uh, I think it was like that, that moment, the next morning or the morning after when the incident happened, uh, we're on the bus. They gave you a call time. They had their stuff on the bus, then the bus would leave like an hour later. We're all on the bus, our stuff's on the bus. I'm in getting waiting for breakfast. And uh, or I'm sorry, that would be the next day. Uh, we're waiting on the bus, waiting on the bus, and it's supposed to be like a 9 a.m. leaving time. At 11, the click comes walking out. And you know, you can imagine everybody in that bus is livid, right? We want to get on the road and get going, and, and we're doing this crap. The next morning, same thing. I drop my bags off and I go in to get my breakfast order and I'm waiting. Now, and, and you know, in, in Europe, they always have like in these hotels, they have a great big uh, uh, like convention room almost mm. that, where they have the breakfast bar set up. So I'm in there waiting for my eggs and my spiegelei and I am drinking orange juice. And Tony Gurria comes in and yells across the room. Now, this is 24 hours after we waited for two hours. It's still like 40 minutes at the bus time leaving. And he yells across the room full of people, Dean, Dean, let's fucking go, Dean. I didn't want to find out, motherfucker. I threw the smash on the wall. I started after him, but he took off. And from that point forward, we had Sarge on our bus. And the ba- <laughs> so the baby faces on that tour, I apologize to you that you had, had the moron on your bus. But the uh, rest of the tour was great with, with Sarge. <laughs> what, what is it with Tony Greer? Because, I mean, the only thing I've ever heard about him is Mr. Personality, in quotation marks. But yeah, is, yeah. is he, well, yeah. So it, it, I, I'll give you, I can give you a lot of these examples. I, I just gave you the one in, yeah, in the yeah. garden uh, in Erie, Pennsylvania. My ex-wife did not like professional wrestling. And she didn't like being around most of the wrestlers. I, my friends and stuff she liked, but she was just not comfortable going there. She never watched wrestling and never really, she, you know, keep on mind that her take on wrestling was me always being wheeled into an operating room and sitting around in pain all the time. And uh, and always being gone. So wrestling wasn't high on her list of, of things. In Erie, it's a very small arena. I think it holds like seven or 8,000 people. 
and they had an area like right as you know, came out the curtain. There was a little area down here, like where the wives and friends and stuff would sit. So I'd left her there because I know I was going to be done pretty early. And to get her up there, she always, she there, her that was went to Lake Erie when they were kids, and there was a re- an Italian restaurant there in town she loved. I said, "Let's go! I'll be done early, and then we'll you know we'll hit, head to the restaurant." So I go out after I'm done. I'm showered. I go out. No Carla. So I go back in there. She went to the bathroom or get a coke or something. Twenty minutes go by. I go back out again. No Carl. Well, I'm back again. Like another 20, 30 minutes, I go back, still no car. Now I'm panicked. I'm thinking, like, did my wife go to the bathroom and somebody grab her? Like, what the hell's going on? I'm panicked. I'm, you know, I don't think we had cell phones yet. So I probably tried to call her. But anyway, I'm asking her. And it seemed like the, the, the brown haired lady, she was sitting right here. And the one wife said to me, Oh, Tony Gurria made her move. I went, Huh? <laughs> said, Yeah, Tony made her move. She later told me, made her move all the way up into the Raptor seats. And I, I went right up to him that night. I said, you ever tell my fucking wife to move again, I'll whoop your fucking ass. I mean, I just had it at that point. You know, they're, they're that kind of shit. He was always like one of those assholes. Like, and I had heard stories, right, from the older guys, Bruno and Dominic, about that shit. He was a stooge. Always wanted stooging on the boys. Where I came from, what Dominic told me, he'd never do that. Like, always stay true to the boys. And uh, just like one of those types of guys that I guess – didn't feel confident enough on his in-ring ability to figure he had to stooge or do something else. Because that's always been my take on those guys. If you don't feel comfortable enough that you can make it in that ring, that you're going to stab your friends in the back, and you, you obviously shouldn't be in that ring. Hey, it got him five different WWF tag team title runs with like five yeah. different or four different partners or whatever. Yeah, uh, we- yeah. WWF, I mean, there's... There's a few stories out there about that, but we won't talk about that. Oh, for gold's sake, we got we've <laughs> we'll, got nine minutes. Yeah, we'll talk about it. allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, but we'll we'll allegedly talk off camera. <laughs> <laughs>